I think when most people think about healthy air in their homes or trying to improve the air quality of their homes, the first thing that they're going to go to is the air filter that's in their furnace. They get all this marketing towards these allergen reduction filters and these high efficiency filters and electrostatic, and there's a bunch of different options out there. And what consumers are basically told is that the more expensive the filter, the fancier the filter, the better the filter is, right? And while that can be true, you and I know that it also causes a host of other issues if the system's not designed properly to accommodate that air filter. So talk to me a little bit about the different types of air filters and why it's important. Yeah, and, and to your point, you know, marketing is tricky. We are bombarded with marketing from the time we get up to the time we go to bed. All day long. Yeah, they tell half-truths or they omit some information. Like air purification device, oh, we, we filter 99 or kill 99%. Well, 99% of what? Well, they don't tell you that. And so the kind of the sweet spot for our industry right now is um, a, a MERV 8 to a 16. And to your point, they have to be designed in the system. Uh, I can't tell you countless times uh, the homeowner, oh, you know, we've got some allergies. They go down to the big box store. Look at this, the allergy buster. It's good yeah. for pollens and mold and spores and dander and dust mite. And this has to be good. And they go and they pull out their one inch filter. They put the allergy buster in. And yes, they will filter fantastic, but they're, they're Goliath, the giant slayer. It will kill your air conditioning system. And so now we're creating a whole host of other problems. And it's like, oh my goodness, I put this filter in. I had a glass filter. I put the allergy buster in and my house is more dusty. Well, guess what? That filter has so much resistance that what duct leakage we may have had gets exaggerated because it's just looking to pull the air. It's going to get it from somewhere. If it can't get it through that filter, it'll start getting it through duct leakage on the return air side. And then we'll start having more dust rather than less dust. And then yeah, the service crazy. calls. It's still counterintuitive too. Yeah. All of a sudden, hey, my rooms aren't feeling as comfortable as they were. Well, you just cut airflow by a third. And so you're not getting enough air moving. And it's like, it's a little more humid in here. Well, because you're not moving you're not enough air. As well. or, or it's super dry in here now. Well, yes, you've slowed the air down so much that we're doing a whole bunch of latent work that maybe we didn't need to do. And so it's, it's a balancing point. Airflow, system performance, delivered BTUs. How many air exchanges per hour are we going to get through that system? If we just cut it by third, well, guess what? You've got one third less air exchanges per hour through the system as well. So it creates a whole host of problems. It can also raise the electric cost of the operation Absolutely. of the system. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, we're going to short cycle on our refrigeration cycle. And so that'll start sending the liquid back. The compressor is going to start running hot. Heat equals energy, right? So our energy yeah. is just going to go up. 